Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. I'd like to share with you some stuff that I've been writing about lately, and it kind of feeds into what we've been talking about in a, lot, in a number of the past few classes. And, and there's an insight that I kind of tied it together for me, and I think it might be helpful to you also to um, hear about this. And the, you, for quite a while, I've been talking about conscious feeling and conscious doing. And um, it comes from you know, reading into the Young Family 40 chapters, and they talk about how this is really the, the essence of, of what it is that feeds into not only your martial prowess, but also what they call spiritual illumination. And um, so a, a lot of what I've been writing about, thinking about, practicing has to do with that, how that, how that fits in and how to express that in modern terms so that we can actually kind of build a bridge to the physical dynamics that we are familiar with uh, and that have been, been explored at least in the, in the last 20 years or so. And um, the, uh, so the, the idea that I came up with is, is that when we talk about the doing and the, the conscious doing and the conscious feeling, they are two aspects of the same thing. They are interdependent and inseparable. And uh, uh, the uh, complementary even, they, uh, and I, I thought of it as like the conscious doing is the yang side. It's the, it's where we are expressing energy. The feeling is the yin side, that is incoming information. And it relates very much to the sensory and the motor neural networks. That is, whenever we want to do something, we send a, an impulse along the motor neurons to actually activate the muscles, either to contract or relax the muscles. So it's kind of a top-down kind of thing. It's a, a young impulse if we take the position of, you know, from the perspective of the brain as, as being the center. And the yin impulse, which is the sensory neural network, it's, it's, it's bottom-up. It's coming in to the central nervous system to be processed and, and related to. And so the, if you can think of it in those, in those terms as the yin and the yang, the, it, I think it, it's, it's helpful to us as Tai Chi practitioners. And uh, you can also think of the, the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is the go, go, go part. And it very often is equated with the fight, flight, freeze mechanism. And I think that's because for most people it is. For most people, all action is begun with a, a tensing up. And this is something that Taiji is, is at the very core of the Taiji teaching is first you're gonna relax and then you're going to, you're gonna move. And getting people to move, particularly under any kind of stress, uh, getting to move in a conscious way is, is, uh, is challenging. And so if we can think of the, like the sensory or the um, sympathetic nervous system, the go, go, go part as disconnecting that from that unconscious response so that we're able to move, but without having that stress response kicking in, things change. And then we can, increase the stress on the system. And so we're able to do that even against resistance. We're able to activate that. And so we're basically doing something which a lot of people consider to be impossible. And that is to make the autonomic nervous system conscious, to be able to consciously direct these impulses. And all this sounds kind of dry. 
you know, whenever I uh, put it in, in that language, but I think it's, it's, it's helpful because it grounds a lot of this woo-woo stuff in something which is very, very substantial. You know, it's like, okay, we, we got to see. And it's also predictable. If you can think of it in those ways, then it, it's not just something that mysteriously happens. It's something that you can train. You can develop a, a, an awareness that allows you to act without that, that stress response, without that tensing up that is so characteristic of so, much, so many of our movements. And even the most relaxed of us, you know, if you, you know, if someone comes up and grabs you by the wrist and uh, with, with some force, there is a tendency, you know, to, to want to do something about that by, by tensing up. And so learning how to be able to, to disconnect from that response then enables you to go one step further and this is the key to it with regard to Tai Chi. It allows you to activate your jin. It's a term I use a lot, and I'm just gonna clarify it here again, just for anybody who's just tuning in. And that is jin is when you have your energy, your chi, and you direct it through the body using you consciously intentionally direct your energy through the body and express it through the body, then we have chin. And it's something that that unconscious stress response gets in the way of. It takes us down an entirely different pathway. And so it's hard, if not impossible, to activate that chin unless you consciously and intentionally move and to do that you have to also feel so there that's the yin and yang of it and they the two go together uh, which one you're doing at any given moment but to, where your attention is is it, it fluctuates and uh, there's an awareness that 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 it is doesn't fluctuate it's a constant awareness but where your attention goes does fluctuate so you're able to to very quickly shift back and forth when i talk about intentionality you know it's something you you learn by doing it slowly and methodically and but in practice it may seem like it's instantaneous it may seem like you didn't do anything you didn't have any attention it just happened and and you just reacted or whatever and and that's a, a state where you've developed your skills to a point where it requires very little uh, effort to make it, to make that, to pull the trigger. But you still have to do the work in order to, to set up those, those pathways. So um, um, any questions or thoughts on, on that before we, uh, before we move on to that? I'd like to actually do something to explore that a little bit. Anybody? Oh, good. All made perfect sense. Okay, Dennis. good. Dennis. Yeah, this is fascinating stuff. I think, I, I think it's important to remember. I think, I think people always get this fight, freeze, fight, fight, fight or fight backwards. I think the first reaction people make is freeze. I think you know, it's always, the case. Yeah, you always fight up. Yeah, you're always like that. I mean, you're you're in a, you're in a group of party, a party in a room. Somebody knocks on the door. Everybody goes silent. You know, <laughs> phone rings. Everybody goes quiet. The deer freezes in the in, in, in the headlight. It freezes. You know, and I think you know when the the next the next step is to run. The last thing you really want to do is fight. That's like the last thing in nature. An animal doesn't want to get in a fight. You get hurt, and that's that's you want to preserve yourself. You know, I knew a guy who was a martial artist. He always used to say, uh, "Run fu beats kung fu every time." You know, <laughs> he, so I think I think free people overlook that. It's, it's like, and I think that's a, that's a, that's the thing. Like in, in, in tai, tai Chi, is that you do you somebody put their hand on you, you freeze, you lock up, and that's your first response. At least for me, it's always been. Sure. And it's something we carry around as an unconscious thing, 
uh, if you have ever had a tight shoulders, stiff neck, you know, that, that was a constant that, state. That's a a freeze response. Mm -hmm. If if your you know if your your butt muscles get really tight, so yeah. that they're you know you're you're in you're in a freeze response. You're pumping the brakes on life, and so what we're saying is that oh, in order to do that, you can tell a student a million times to relax your shoulders, but unless you make the jump to where you're doing, you have something else to replace it with, then it's always gonna pop back in because we are hardwired as humans by millions of years of evolution to go there. It's, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a survival response. It used to be a survival response and not so much anymore. Carrying around your tension all the time is is not necessarily a helpful thing in uh, in our current uh, culture. So you want to be able to ah, have that opportunity to let that all go, get out of that freeze mode, and be able to let the chi flow. Jonathan, yeah, in doing this with you, it it, it does seem that Dennis is of course exactly right. You do freeze physically. And you also freeze conceptually, though, if you're in your next, like you say to yourself, oh, my my arms being, you're squeezing my arm, like the objectification of what's happening is itself a kind of freezing. And you seem to want us to stay in process because life is in process in every moment. So to feel is not to think about feeling, but to be in a process of feeling, which is very different than conceptualizing what's happening to you at the moment, however briefly. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that this as the foundation of Jin. So we have to be, we have to move out of that unconscious deer in the headlights state to be able to move into Jin, to be able to take the Taiji to or the martial art to that next level. And whether or not you use it to, to kick ass or not, you Jin is enables you to move to that, to a higher state of being, where you're able to function without the restraints of, you know, Jonathan's saying, your mind freezing. And so you're able to, you're, you're, you can know without thinking. Your ability to, to grasp the essence of the situation improves your, your intuition, you begin to tap into your intuition a lot more freely whenever you're in that super conscious state. So training this so that it's not something that just pops up every now and then or whenever we're doing one of these classes, but it's something that you do a thousand times a day. And that is be able to consciously do that. And if... Um, yeah, and that requires doing something which is, for most people, an unconscious thing, and that is feeling. We're making it conscious feeling means to actually physically, mentally, spiritually attune yourself to the experience of what's going on and without thinking about it, just feeling it. So like if you grab your wrist and you just rotate your hand and just tune into that feeling. Notice that immediately your mind shifts, it clears. You've created a whole brain coherence just by that simple action. And if your emphasis is on, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna beat my right hand with my left hand, then you shift it out of the, the pure feeling thing and you've turned it into something else. But you're just back and just saying, no, no, I'm just feeling that. If you're thinking, of, thinking about it, saying, oh, well, this, I feel this. Oh yeah, there's my skin and there's my hair, and blah, blah, blah. Then you're out of it also. It's using a different part of your awareness where you're actually attuning to the physical sensations without a story. And so that's the, the origin of the jinn is getting into that state so that then what ah then we can we can go and we can actually 
directed because the gin is more of a direction directional thing it's like how how's the energy going is it spiraling is it going up is it going down is it going in is it going out and so all these things are qualities of of the gin it's an expression of the type of the direction of the of the movement uh to a large degree sometimes there are other qualities you know it can be an explosive type of quality you know or it can be a a, a finely attuned listening quality all these are types of gin but it's a they are descriptions those different qualities are descriptions of that essential thing which is attuning to the feeling and getting it so that you are allowing the energy to move in a directed way you're consciously and intentionally doing something with the energy because we can all do our tai chi and, and get lots of chi but if it's not circulating if it's not expressing itself then it we're missing 90% of the show. Valerie. Um, I hope this doesn't sound too simplistic or anyway. Can you give me a your interpretation of what chi is versus what jin is? Okay. So chi is generally speaking, it's a quality of of uh, energy. That's you know, in, in, in the broadest sense. You, and how do we define energy? And this is this is tricky because it's something that is, you know, people are trying to do for a long time. And my version of it is, energy is the relationship between two things, in its simplest form. What the quality of relationship is that thing? Is it, you know, how how is this thing relating to that thing? And that relationship is, is defined by the air, is expressed as energy. So Jin is a way of intentionally directing that energy and, and expressing it through the body. Does that make sense? Is that, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get a real, real fundamental there, you know, because there's lots of ways to talk about energy, but if we talk about it, just the relationship of two things, you know, if if I'm pulling my hands apart, you know, there's a relationship between my two hands, and that creates energy. If I push my hands together without bringing them together, I'm creating energy because there's a relationship that didn't exist before that exists now, and it is brought together by intentionality. It's brought together volitionally. We're saying, oh, yeah, I'm making this happen. If I bring my hands up here. And without doing that, without having that intention there, the energy between them is, is very different than it was if I'm mm, pushing, pushing and uh, uh, squeezing that together without moving, then it's, a, it's an entirely different thing. Richard. I just, I just wanted to <clears throat> ask for myself. Uh, Jen should be thought of as uh, being both yang, yang, Yang and Yin. Uh, I mean, not at the same time, but well, yin and, energy. I, I think in, in, in any situation, it, everything in, in the everything in the manifest universe is both Yang and Yin. So you can, you certainly is, and so it's how much, you know, and 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 where, how do we how do we make it? So like, a, if the Lu energy is incoming, and is, so it's it's a uh, coming in, and so that's yin, and that's as close as we get to to pure yin. But without yang, that it, it's meaningless. So it uh, same thing with with like a like a ward off posture is considered to be like yang. It's considered to be very very yang posture, and that's because it the energy is going up and out, and so uh, so it's it's directional. So but. Yes. Uh, Every situation is going to be both yang and yin. Okay. I, I just meant that jin can be expressed either in a yang or yin way. Yes, absolutely. And it's just what direction, what direction is it going? Right. Is, is, the, is, the, is what makes it uh, yang or yin? Keith. Keith. You're on mute, Keith. 
Thank you, Maria. <laughs> hey, I actually I want to back up like a chapter. When you were talking about the situation of where you get caught unexpectedly and you get grabbed or a situation happens which surprises you beyond belief, you know, uh, you know what, I'm a curious dude and you're a really smart dude. So I know that there's a physical adrenaline cortisone action that happens at that instant. So how does the Tai Chi, you know, get you to focus that burst of energy? Uh, you know, I guess in a, into a more calming place. I mean, what's your first reaction? You get grabbed, you know? So it's just, it's a question and uh, it's an interesting. And when you started talking about this concept of how Tai Chi can do this to you, well, how you can react in a situation of the least unexpected, that's really intriguing to me. Bye. That, that, is, the, uh, that is the game, Keith, is learning how to not react in a way that, that is, uh, uh, that is driven by adrenaline. That you, if you need the adrenaline, you can you can find it. But it's so we're talking very much about that exact thing. That is that that reactiveness that you're talking about. We're shifting away from that, so that you're able to to immediately discern what is the potential danger in this situation. So just because someone taps me on the shoulder doesn't mean I'm gonna turn around and sock him in the jaw. You know, uh, that would be very dangerous. I, you know, I, what we attune to as we develop this super conscious state is learning to evaluate the potential dangers of any situation and your field becomes bigger. As you become more coherent and more filled with energy, you're able to sense danger, almost like Spider-Man. You're able to sense danger uh, before it manifests itself. You can pick up on bad intentions long before they turn into actions. You know when to cross the street rather than go down that dark alley. And that kind of thing. So you start to develop this certain wisdom with that. And it comes from learning to control that, that unconscious stress response that you're talking about there. Okay, so let's do a little, uh, let's do a little exercise and uh, play with this a little bit. Okay, so let's start off by stepping out and establishing our three pillars. This enables us to be able to tap into the big G and to also move into that super conscious state. Slows the mind down, clears out the system and makes the energy more settled, more coherent. So begin by feeling your feet, feeling the pressure of your feet on the floor. Now feel into the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. You feel yourself settling down, down, down into the floor. And this process of settling down is a yin process. We're getting sung, releasing downward. And we're going to complement that by reaching with the crown of the head without letting go of that settling down without letting go of 
the the yin in the legs. So you're reaching with the crown of the head, and that reaching is a yang impulse. Your earth is yin, and we're tapping into that through the feet. Feeling the balls of the feet allows us to access the earth chi. Consciously doing that, we're intentionally doing that. We're reaching with the crown of the head, intentionally. Tuck in the chin and feel a tug on the, on the neck, just at the base of the skull, the jade pillow gate. And this connects us up, that's with our nervous system, with the parasympathetic nervous system. We, by opening up that jade pillow gate, we're, unkinking the hose at the base of the skull and taking pressure off of the vagus nerve and the medulla oblongata to, and, and allowing the body mind to communicate more freely, bringing energy and information to the internal organs, allowing everything to re return to a dynamic balance. As you do this, feel into your hands and notice the chi that's building up there. Feel the tingling, pulsing, sense of fullness in your hands. We're just filling up the whole system with, with a lot of chi. And reach with your elbows. Relax your shoulders. So you're opening the shoulder gate. Relax your lower back. And drop your sacrum. So what we're doing now is we're filling up. We're filling up the tank. Plugging into the big chi. Unkinking the hose so that we're allowing that energy to flow more freely. Point your index fingers and just feel that. Wiggle the finger a little bit just so you can get that sense of it and feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole body mind. Check in with your hands and notice there's a fullness there. Spiral down to the left, releasing the hip joint and then spiral down to the right. So we're getting sung kwa, we're releasing at the hip joint, allowing the energy to flow between the torso and the legs more freely. Off forward from the hip joints, keep your back straight. And bring your hands up, carrying, feeling the, the resistance of the space as you move through it. Reach with your elbows. Very slow, just pausing and just kind of feeling into your hands as you do this. Feel the weight of your arms. Reach with your elbows and feel the space between your shoulder blades opening up. Mm -hmm. 
very slightly rotate your forearms and rotate them back just so that almost imperceptibly, but just so you can feel that activation. Feel the energy in your hands, feel the energy throughout your body as you do that. This is what I mean by activating the chin. You're feeling that body-mind connection being directed by consciousness. Continue to rotate, rotate forward and back, just feeling that forward and back as you do that. And just notice the effect that's having on your energy. Check on the feelings there. Have the palms facing down now. And just go into stillness. And but just feel the the energy that's moving in your body mind as you do this. Reach with the elbows. This time bend your wrists so the fingers come down and then lift up the fingers ever so slightly. Just back and forth just so you can feel the simple action there and how that's building up the energy. It's not just energy now, it's the fact that you're doing this as an intentional thing creates jinn. Bring your hands, start to move them down, bring them down an inch or two and then up and then down and then up. Feel the wrists as you're reaching up. Feel the resistance of the space, like you're pushing down on a beach ball in a swimming pool. Feel that resistance as you do that. And up, press down. Now pressing down and feel the pressing down, but you're not moving. Feel the resistance of the space. Your muscles are not being tensed. We have, this is a readiness potential. This is your, your body mind is activated. Your nervous system is ready to move, but you're not moving. This is what is meant by conscious feeling, conscious movement. You have this intention and you can feel but it, you don't have to actually execute the, uh, the motion in order to do that, but you can. You can continue to press downward now and feel the motion. But notice that it's a different kind of motion. There's an intelligence to that motion. Your whole body mind is involved with that. Bring your hands down and feel. Reach with your elbows, feel, feel that, and feel it opening up the shoulders. Feel it. Bend your wrists so the fingers are, are hanging down, and you're starting to move upward with the, with the wrists very slowly. Feel that resistance as they're pushing against the space like you're moving through water. Raise the fingers.
Now reach down with the fingers very slowly. Feel the resistance as you do that. Feel the lack of muscular tension as you execute that. Lift the fingers. Now rotate the forearms. So just you're starting to rotate and go an inch and then come back. Go an inch and then come back and feel the connection, the energetic connection throughout your whole body as you do that. Letting go of any extraneous muscular tension as you do this. What is the least amount of effort physically to create this effect? Allowing the energy to do the work for you. And then beyond the energy, it's your intention that creates that effect. Bring your hands back, palms down, and press down. Feel into the stillness. Feel the fullness of the energy in your body mind. Get the feeling of lifting your arms without actually lifting them. Get the feeling of turning your forearms without actually turning them. Get the feeling of lifting your fingers without actually lifting them. What we're here, we're doing here is we are consciously activating the yin and the yang. the motor and the sensory, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic. We're doing that intentionally. From the state of super consciousness. This allows us to access the gin. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee and spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right leg and step in with your left foot. Take a deep breath, hands come up. And as you exhale, press down and disappear the chi. Feel your throwing all that chi away, moving into emptiness, stillness. Allowing the nature chi to radiate through you. Seat, please.
You had something to say, Keith? You know, that was a really heavy, heavy session. You know, I'm still learning the fundamentals, but that was a really nice journey that I was just taking on. Great. Made me feel immensely better. Wonderful. Wonderful. Cool. Uh, anybody else? I think go, Dennis. Yeah, I was starting to get a little discomfort in my shoulders, and you, then you reminded me to push with my intention, and the discomfort went away in my shoulders. Good, beautiful, cool. Stan, unmute Stan. Unmute Stan. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a little observation. Uh, it seems like when you get down to the point where uh, we're uh, feeling as it's going up, but not moving, it seems like I still have a tendency, uh, at least the, at the very beginning, to actually move the, that part then very slightly, but it's still there. But it takes a bit of doing to not move uh, with the intention of moving. Uh, just like I said, we'll just say uh, maybe I just need to work on it a little bit more. Sure. That's great, though. Good to, good to be observant of those things. Yes. And it's, not, it's not wrong, you know, yeah. to, to do that. You, you just sort of feel into say, OK, you're getting you're getting the sense of what it what does it take to be able to to activate the gin without actually having to carry through. Yes. Be able to to rev up the car without actually putting in gear. <laughs> yes, thank you. Scott. I have to say the um, reminder to um, not make a story, not label it while we're doing it, really made that really deep. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the. I think that's. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, that's definitely my biggest problem. Is the brain keeps telling me making stories while I'm trying to do it. You know, uh, it's called being called being a human. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> it's it's hardwired into us, and and being able to disconnect that function is uh, is the game right now. Being able to find the gap between thoughts and be able to act there be able to function there yeah it's, oh, oh god i'm sorry did me never speak to say yeah it's it's really not hard to do it's hard to remember to do it because <laughs> <laughs> the you know the stories keep taking you away from it indeed well i do really appreciate the guided imagery that rick is being is is able to take us through and you know it's just that's just just like an honest observation as i'm learning as as my teacher said okay this saturday is kind of, kind of get it on dude i've been screwing around for a year now <laughs> get it on <laughs> there you go sifu <laughs> um Cool. Okay, anybody else? All right, so moving on. Thank you for all that. Um, let's, uh, what do we have? Oh, we got, we got a little bit of time. Let's, let's talk about the next uh, one of the Ba Men. So if you recall, we were talking about these are the eight gates, the eight energies, the eight essential movements of Taiji Tran. And um, the you know, we've covered several of them so far, and kind of starting back at the beginning where we did Pong, which is an up and out energy, and we have Lu, which is a down and in quality of energy. And so the next one of the you know the four primary ones is G, which is um usually translated as press and uh, so we have ward off roll back press and push were the you know, the four primary uh, uh 
of of the uh, of the of the eight, and um, it's something that most Taiji forms will have as a core element of of that. And a uh, lot of interpretations of it and what, what does it mean? But when I'm talking about the bomb man, we're talking about the eight energy gates. I'm looking at it from a perspective, not of an effective martial technique, although it is, but going beyond that and saying, what is the energy that animates that? What is the jinn that animates that? Because you can make something look like the form but still be doing it in a very mechanical way and completely miss the, the energy gate part of the uh, part of that. Because whenever we get to the expression of it as a jinn, then it requires very little movement and very little force to make, to make something rather remarkable happen. And if you're um, looking for quick results, you oftentimes will kind of just go with, with muscular tension as a way of, of, of performing it. And sometimes, particularly with G, with the press energy, that can be actually quite powerful. Uh, but it lacks the energy gate quality that, uh, that we're looking for with this. And so the uh, two primary ways I've heard of, uh, of, of describing this, this press energy. Because there's not a lot written about it. Something one of those things you have to kind of figure out. There's a lot of different teachers I've talked to have different opinions on, on what that means. And the two primary ones are that of a squeezing. So that you're like, you're, you're pushing something together. This hand's coming in, that hand's going out against it. And that is uh, as a sense of squeezing together. And that is one way of expressing that press energy. The other one, the one that I tend to favor is where you are, both arms are expressing energy outward, which seems to violate the, where's the yin part? If both, end, if both arms are going outward. And here's where the, we have to find the yin in the lower body. That is the sung kwa sinking into the earth, actually moving downward as we're expressing the energy outward. And so we have the, 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 the separation is occurring top to bottom rather than right to left. And so the, uh, it's usually expressed as a one arm comes out like a, as, a, as a ward off type of, type of motion with the arm curved in front of the chest and expanding outward just like Pong Jin. And the other hand, either contacts at the, at the hand, the, the palm of the hand hits the, the heel of, of the other hand, that's one way, or on the wrist. So there's an expression that way, but both are moving out in, in that direction. I've seen other, other ways of doing it as well, but those are two of the, the primary ways, either like palm on the heel or on the wrist. And, um, so the, for our purposes, let's just, just do it palm on the heel. And the idea here is it's, you're, you could put a butterfly between your hands and you would not harm the butterfly. That's the, that's the, the intention here is that we're, we're not using muscular tension to make this connection. It's an energetic connection. And so it's going to be, we're going to find out how to fill this form very much like what we just did with these kind of movements where you're activating the gin by what? By these little, little motions that enable you to feel into your form. And these are 
way I've just described to you, it's kind of a hack as a way of, of getting you, tricking your mind into noticing that there is, you got something there. Because, you know, Scott was saying, it's like, you know, we get into our story. And when we're in the story, we're separated out from the event. We have we've created space, psychic space between, say, in this case, my hands and my my thinker bone. And so that, and I fill it up with a story. And when that happens, no chin. So we have to be able to move into that feeling state, which allows us to move into a super conscious state, at which point cool stuff happens. So let's uh, stand up and let's see if we've got a few minutes, we can uh, at least introduce this, this idea here. So let's uh, put the right foot forward. So you're going to, we're just going to go to the end, the payoff part. We're not going to do the whole, the whole movement. We'll save that for next time. But you want to feel the ball of the right foot. You want to set the right knee. And we're going to go to the, the completed form. So your weight is about 70% in your right leg, 70, 80% in your right leg. You're feeling it over the ball of the foot. You release your quad, so spiral down, turn, just so you can feel that you can release the hip joint. Bring your right arm in front of you, like a ward off posture. So like you, as if you're standing like that. So the, the palm of your hand is over your, the center line. The elbow is, elbow is reaching out. So you want to feel that opening up the shoulder without tension. It's just a reaching rather than a pushing. So that quality of, of reaching with the elbow opens up the shoulder joint. It unkinks the hose in the shoulder. You're reaching with the wrist. Your arm is very relaxed, very, very soft. And just feel into that. So we have a basically a ward off posture here. So now you're going to pick up your left hand and bring it in contact with, you can do the wrist, you can do the hand, whatever you, you feel like. Feel that and reach with the elbows. Remember to keep your hands very soft as if you have a, a bird in there that you're protecting. You point with your fingers so you're feeling they're extending, but without tension. You're reaching with the fingers. So here we have all this young energy coming up and out. It's kind of like two vectors coming out your arms and directed straight forward. It's like you got two vectors kind of meeting there and there's a, there's a, a beam of, of energy going out straight up from your, the center of your chest. And to provide some yin with that, we want to feel the ball, set the knee and uh, sink into that right leg. Back leg is very soft. It's holding a position, but it's not pushing away. So where oftentimes people will try to do a press by kind of pushing away from the earth and pushing out with their arms. And that's a muscular way of approaching it, very hard way of approaching it. And it's going to miss the gin part. Here we're what we're doing is we're allowing the earth chi to rise up and we're getting out of the way by relaxing, getting sung in the claw, relaxing his shoulders, allowing the energy to come up the spine, out through the arms, reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists, reach with the fingers. And this is sort of an exaggerated posture, but I want you to get the a sense of it. 
you can certainly do it a, a much smaller posture, but let's, for now, right now, I want you to feel that expansiveness. And so we have two directions, the energy coming up and out, and then other energy is going down in through the floor. So we have this contradictory yet complementary yin and yang as we're doing this. Uh, and just bring your, separate your hands, bring them down and pivot, step in and deep breath and disappear the chi. Okay, grab a seat, please. Cool. So I wanted to introduce that as we'll get, we'll play around with that some more next week, but I want to give you an idea of what, what we're, what we're going for here is we're going for a press or G posture that is soft yet extremely powerful because it is rooted in this quality of chin rather than muscular force. Cool. Uh, any questions, thoughts? Stan. Off mute, Stan. You're still muted, Stan. Oh, there it is. I uh, just had a curiosity, or am I uh, jumping in the wrong way? Are the center of palms getting into the act? It can be. It can be. Don't I mean like have the uh, Lao Gong points pushing against the other. You can do it that way too. The center of the palms, the heel of the hand, the wrist. There's a, a lot of different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, practice them all. Find the one you like. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you're still maintaining that slight, uh, you know, not a uh, real contact, but just a slight in there. So you have a, yes. you said about holding the bird in there. That's right. Okay. All right. Very good. So you're, yeah. it's a very energetic quality there. Yes. To uh, to doing that, Keith, do you have something? Thank you. I actually do, Rick. And I know we saw each other recently. And I, as you're leaving, I think you had. I stood up and you put one hand one hand on my forehead, the other in my chest, and you're just trying to give me this sense of balance. But that's a really good exercise. But what I had to say about that, that form, although I know it's completely different uh, Eastern martial art, uh, in high school, you know, did Shotokan for a while, which is the basis is basically your hips, your hips to your knees to your feet is the anchor for everything. And that form uh, really like accentuated that of just bringing the power up from the earth. And if I can figure out a way how to just like do all this shit and settle down, then I'll be solid. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Scott. Well, it was really interesting while you were talking about it. And as you said, where is the yin? You know, I was, I was doing it while you were talking about it. And like, just from my waist, just sitting, from my waist down just went completely in. It was really weird. It was really interesting. Nice. Very good. Great. Dennis. Yeah, thank you. I never never heard it explained that way. I finally found it. Thank you. Cool. I never sunk my legs that way. Thanks. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. <laughs> else? Okay. Okay. Thank you all so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Maria. Have a, have a happy uh, holiday.